Welcome to On Texas Football. I'm Bobby Burton, joined by Jerry Hamilton of On Texas Football. How you doing, Jerry? I'm great, man. I'm great. It's a commitment day in the portal, so it's a, it's always a fun day. Well, there are entrance and exits uh, today for the Longhorns. Uh, this is a, this episode of Talk and Ball Monday brought to you by our friends at LonghornWealth.net. Uh, we'll talk about John Donovan and his uh, group in a little bit. Uh, in a little bit, Jerry, let's talk about first Bill Norton and his addition to the squad as well as Savion Red's uh, entrance into the portal. Uh, let's start, I actually want to start with Savion Red. A young man uh, out of South Grand, or out of Grand Prairie, uh, led his team to the playoffs, which was a tough feat uh, for a Grand Prairie team that is often outmanned. Uh, came to Texas, showed some things early, and showed some ability, um, not, not just at receiver, but when moved to running back. He was in the Red yeah. Cat last year. But frankly, I think that the emergence of Jaden Blue last year, along with the signing of Cedric Baxter, kind of just pushed uh, pushed uh, Savian Red into a situation where he wasn't going to beat anyone else out. Then you add Christian Clark, uh, as well as um, Jarrett Gibson uh, to the group. Trey Wisner's got that boutique role uh, kind of filled where Keelan Robinson was, at least for this year perhaps more next year. But my point being, it got to be crowded and there yeah. wasn't really a place for Savion Red. Do you, you agree with that assessment? Yeah, I mean, look, this is one of those things we've talked about, Bobby. There's going to be players that leave the program that it's just a log jam that go on and be really good players somewhere else. I'll say this right now. I really like Savion Red as a running back. I think he's got a great running back frame. I think he's got really good running back vision. He runs with power. He falls forward. He is a tough sucker on contact, right? It won't shock me if he doesn't transfer some and go somewhere and go rush for 800 yards next year. I, that won't surprise me at all. I think he's that level player. The problem is, I mean, Texas has six running backs. I mean, and six running backs aren't going to play. Uh, that's the reality of it. Um, and Savion Red is going into year three. So at, at some point, you start to look at that and say, okay, well, if Baxter's one and Blue's two, and I'm putting myself in red shoes, am I going to stay here and rush 30 times for 120 yards? Or am I going to transfer somewhere else and carry that ball 150 times for 700 yards? I mean, I, I, eventually it comes down to that. And and look, there's a, other players that have left that I think are going to go on and do really good things at other places because I think Texas is evaluated well and develops well. Um, but I just think, it, Bobby, you're right. It just came down, it just came down to a log jam and opportunity and, you know, it, it, it kind of – it sucks to see guys, some of these guys leave, but it also means the program's in really good hands because guys don't leave if they've got great opportunity. I, I would agree with that, not typically. And, right. and, and the reason I would say that is, um, you know, Red is a, is a guy that I feel like is a catalyst at times. He's, he's got a lot of spunk to him, you know, when he gets out there, even at the spring game, Jerry. Yeah, uh, he was out there trying to rile up the crowd, get it going after he made a big run. He's a he's that kind of guy, but but is he better than is he better than Cedric Baxter? Is he better than Jaden Blue? Probably not, you know. And ultimately, it's a it's a what he what can you do on the field? And frankly, I don't know that he's going to be better than either Trey Wisner, uh, Christian Clark, or Jarrett Gibson on the back end coming underneath him. I think that the guys that will often go in the portal are going to be those guys that are sandwiched yeah. in front of them and behind them. Yeah. Uh, we mentioned that case with Billy Walton as well, right? You know, with Trey, uh, Trey Moore ahead of him, Ethan Burke ahead of him, and then underneath him now, Colin Simmons coming in. Yeah. And so guys that that get sandwiched in years, I think, uh, are, are they have they have issues because it's not just a log jam. A log jam can be guys ahead of you. It's it's coming at you from both sides. Yeah, right. And uh, so there's that. All right. In good news, though, uh, let's let's talk to the good news now. And that's uh, uh, Bill Norton, uh, defensive lineman out of Arizona, played uh, over the ball and the three technique last year at Arizona. Uh, good all around athlete, good player. Played at Georgia uh, before transferring to Arizona. Now will come to Texas uh, and immediately find some time, uh, Jerry. In my opinion, uh, on the oh, yeah. front. That needs some, you know, it needs more uh, adults in the room isn't always the right phrase, but it needs some guys 
that are proven against higher level competition right. after losing to Vondre Sweat and Byron Murphy this year. This is what I've been saying about Bill Norton. I almost look that what he did at Arizona last year, what, 179 snaps, A gap, 170 uh, B gaps, right? Um, that He had a good year as a first year, like, real player at the Power 5 level. Um, so that's good on him. Six five and a half, three twenty five. I saw him in person. He looks all of that. He brings the size with the experience. Going to be a sixth year in college, right? I mean, so he is an older college football player that experienced success on a good team last year that won ten games, seven in a row in the season. But where I think some of his experience is valuable for Texas next year in the role he'll play, um, and I think he's going to be a good role player. I think Texas fans that shouldn't expect a difference maker, a good role player, a piece to the puzzle on the interior D line. I think four seasons, one of those he had injuries, going up against all NFL offensive linemen at Georgia every day. He's played against large humans for how many snaps you think that is in practice. The game snaps are almost irrelevant in one way. That guy's played against a bunch of 340 pound guys that got drafted in the NFL at Georgia. So he knows how to play against large humans. He has had a lot of experience playing against future NFL offensive linemen. That is a real plus for him. And he's also been in those stadiums. He's been in a program that won two national championships, no different than a Don I Mitchell. Their teammates at Georgia transferred the same year. He's been around it. He knows what it's like. He also knows the day-to-day practice against really talented players at Georgia. I think that's going to be a plus for Texas in his one year at Texas. Outside of what you see on the field, he's well prepared for what's in front of him in his final year in college. Uh, It's interesting because we know that uh, Norton is a piece of the puzzle, as you mentioned, at defensive tackle. What about the other two guys that Texas is talking to, at least right now? Jay Toya uh, out of UCLA that was in over the weekend. And then Dominic Williams out of TCU that visited Oklahoma over the weekend. Yeah. Uh, Is Texas got a chance at either or both of those guys, in your opinion? Obviously, Toya already on campus. I think Williams uh, gets in tomorrow. What what are your thoughts? Yeah, I I think you you go after both of them, and you got to get one of them. And if you get two, great, right? I mean, I think that's the reality of it. Um, But I I think, look, with uh, the question is, could you get both of those guys? Um, with Savea and Bill Norton having transferred in now. I mean, because at some point it gets to be a snaps game, right? People start counting snaps and opportunity. We just talked about a player leaving. Um, so I think, uh, obviously, I think Don, I think Dominic Williams is the difference maker as a player. I think he could be a 10-year pro. I think that highly of him. I think Toya uh, is a big body anchor player um, that's had success, 50, what, 58 tackles the last two seasons at UCLA. After he developed for a while, he's got those strong connections to Nansen. I think UCLA's putting up a fight to try to keep him. Um, but, uh, you know, that's the question is could you, Texas has to get one of those guys. Could you could you find a way to get both? I wouldn't say it's out of the question, uh, but I do think now with Savea and Norton on, uh, on, on board, uh, Savea played well in the spring game, kind of gets down to a, a, a snaps number. Uh, But I do think Dominic Williams, I'll be honest, I think Dominic Williams is the the best of all the D tackles that Texas is recruiting, either Savea, Norton, Toya, or Dominic Williams. I think he is the highest level player. Um, uh, But I think if you're Texas, you just have to get one of those guys. You can't really be too picky right now. There may be some other things going in the portal uh, as well. But uh, before we talk about that, I want to say thank you uh, to one of our very happy, very proud sponsors. Uh, We appreciate him very much. That's John Donovan. President, Longhorn Wealth Management Group. Uh, John wants to remind all of the On Texas Football family that you can receive a 90-minute free consultation to explore how Longhorn Wealth can help you and your family maximize your wealth, minimize your taxes, and secure your own financial future and legacy by simply calling the Longhorn Wealth Team, 972-707-4900, or visit longhornwealth.net. Take advantage of this exciting offer to meet with John, a certified financial planner who has spent more than 30 years serving Longhorn fans all across the state and nation, and let he and his team help secure your desired financial future. Call them 972-707-4900 or go to longhornwealth.net to schedule your free 90-minute introductory consultation today. Hook them 
uh, from John and his crew. Hey, uh, Jerry, the next thing that we talked about, and you actually put this out a little bit earlier today, uh, this morning on, on TexasFootball.com, uh, you mentioned that Texas could be looking in the portal at DB big game. You called it big game hunting a little bit, deep sea fishing. Um, you know, it, it, is that going to be a situation where we got to wait and see what exactly happens uh, otherwise in the portal for Texas? I mean, we think they're gonna, there's going to be some attrition uh, for Texas in the secondary. Uh, we, we've uh, talked about that with some guys, but uh, what are your thoughts on on that? And have you heard anything more as it relates to uh, a potential name, or is this just you thinking? Hey, they're go you've heard behind the scenes they're going to look big for big name players wherever they yeah. can find a, find a, a a guy that can really make a difference. Yeah, I mean, look, I, I think there's a couple of names floating behind the scenes. Um, uh, there's one name that's been out there publicly, but I just don't see that, Bobby. I, I think. Here's the thing I, I really believe uh, from the people we've all talked to is uh, culture fits important. You're not going to sacrifice culture for talent. Um, and not, there's enough talented players that are close enough all over the line uh, that Texas feels like are good enough to play for them that you don't have to go risky at, at, at this position. Uh, but I do think I'd be surprised if Texas doesn't go after a corner in the portal. I think, look, the one thing going into the SEC versus the Big 12, and there's good, great coaching in the Big 12, there's good receivers. The X or your outside receivers in the SEC are a little bit different animal on the whole in the SEC. Longer limb, faster guys. Um, so if you can get some length at corner with long speed is the key, then I think you're going to see Texas go after that player as long as he's a culture fit. Interesting. And he's got to be a great player because they've got uh, a pair of, uh, uh, you know, uh, Texas uh, looks good in the secondary, but then again, I looked at that spring game and you're like, whoa, wait a minute. What happened here? You know, Terrence Brooks bid on that and didn't do the, the switch. And uh, there's a big touchdown. Kobe Black, even though he's young, didn't he got beat over the top by Ryan Wingo. Uh, Gavin Holmes didn't make a play against uh, Isaiah Bond. Uh, those are three big touchdown plays against uh, defensive backs, two of whom are expected to play quite a bit this year. Yeah. Right. And so. Uh, talking about uh, guys that you, you got to worry about a little bit. That's that's just the way it is uh, at, at this point. All right, uh, let's let's step away from the portal and talk just briefly about regular recruiting, okay? Yep. Um, and high school recruiting. Um, several players came in this weekend. We thought there might be a commitment announcement or two through the weekend as, based on that, but some guys decided to hold off a little bit. Uh, have gone and, and kind of started the process of really thinking it through and figuring out what they want to do. Uh, where are you at right now in what Texas is doing? Not necessarily names, okay, yeah. Jerry, but more strategy. Take us through how Steve Sarkeesian and his crew is kind of thinking about the next week to two weeks into the month of May uh, for the Longhorns as it relates to recruiting. Yeah, I think the one thing about this staff is there's a few guys that are obviously above the line that if they wanted to shut it down, could call and commit. Uh, I think there's a number of those players. I think the majority of those players want to take a couple of official visits, which could, which could start in mid-May, could be late May and early June, before Texas' two big weekends, June 14th through 16th and 21st through 23rd. Um, I do think Texas, some targets, maybe shut it down a little bit before then. Not a lot, but a couple, three. Um, but I, I like what the staff is doing because here's the thing. Um, the evaluation process continues. I mean, Aiden Anding was offered in late March. They're, they're going to find two or three other guys here on the road in May. The staff is in-house this week, um, obviously having exit interviews or end-of-season interviews with the current team and making a lot of calls to the guys that they're in on right now. This is a week to work in-house. Then they get on the road next week. This evaluation process continues. Um, and, and, and look for a Kenny Baker, he's going and seeing these guys for the first time, Bobby. This is the first time he's going to go see in person, uh, Josiah Sharma workout, Brandon Brown, Derry Norris, Myron Charles, Kevin Wynn, Malik Autry, all these D linemen. We talk about Chase Sims. Um, so somebody that's not on the line right now could end up being above the line after an in-person evaluation. But I think, look, the, the battles are ongoing. Uh, I think there's, you know, I think there's seven receivers that have official visits scheduled. I think four of those guys are above the other three. 
uh, for Texas. But I really like what they're doing uh, because it, there isn't a rush. And Sarkeesian's not going to be in a rush. He's not He's not looking. Could Texas get three or four guys, I know for sure, to b- pull off their timelines right now? Absolutely. But the question is, do you need to? Do you feel good about those guys already, where they're at? Let them get a couple of visits out of their system then get those guys off their timelines. I really like what Texas does from a high school recruiting perspective. I mean, look, if if Texas had tried to f- get numbers in this class early, an Aiden Anding might not even have an offer right now. And Aiden Anding is going to end up being, I think, better than some of the corners that were offered earlier in the state of Texas, around the country. I think the kid's a really high-level player. So I think the evaluation process continues in uh, last week in April and through May. And I think that's a great thing for Texas. Um and then there, there, what also comes with that, Bobby, is is you see, because you can take more than five official visits now, you know, you, you can see if any of these other kids you think you're doing well with start scheduling up some mid-May officials, seeing if those recruitments are going to shift and change a little bit. I love the patient approach by the staff. I think they're in a good position. I'll say this. I think Texas, Bobby, is in a good position with 10 to 12 guys right now. I think they're in a good position with 10 to 12 guys right now. On top um, of the six commitments. Yes. Yes. I, I really do. Um, but that doesn't mean those guys are ready to end their recruitment right now. But I think they're in a good position with about a dozen kids. But some of them are going to – the vast majority are going to have to play out a while. And if you're Steve Sarkeesian, if you feel good about where you're at and you like your momentum, the worst thing you can do sometimes is try to strong arm a kid. But that can backfire, one. And two, then a kid commits before he's ready and he still wants to go visit other places. And then what do you have? That's probably not the scenario we want to be in. So I love what Texas is doing in recruiting at the high school level. I really do. I love that they're going to really evaluate more players. I don't think Aiden Anding is the last offer in this 25 class. I'll say that. Good stuff there, Jerry. All right, uh, final final little segment uh, that I want to talk to you about is this. I mean, we've had – 48 hours now to kind of stew on the spring game. Um, Given that, what do you think Texas needs to address? What are the things that are better than you thought maybe they were? And what are the things that are maybe more of an issue than you thought they were heading into the spring game? I'm going to take the issue. Okay. okay? I'm going to say secondary. Okay. Um, And I'll I'll say right now that I, I think that corner is an issue. Perhaps I mean you can't uh, you you just can't give up big plays like that. Uh, and three different corners gave up seventy plus yard touchdowns. That's not okay, Jerry. Yeah. Um, anyway, or not seventy yard, but a, you, you get long touchdown yeah. plays. Right. Big plays. Um, and you know I I feel like that is uh, an issue that Texas can't you know they can't overlook. Now um, I guess you could argue that well maybe because. Jade Barron wasn't there. It all got discombobulated on uh, that sort of stuff. But that that only goes so far. There's going to be games this year where Jade Barron's not playing. Right. I mean, so um, I, I feel like that may be the one where we're looking at, okay, well, you know, what's, what's going to happen uh, when they find a team that really throws the ball around the yard pretty well? Um, and so I don't, I don't know the answer. I know that uh, that that was not as good as I expected, and may mean Texas needs more than perhaps we thought uh, when it comes to the portal or elsewhere. Yeah, for sure. I mean, I, I agree with that uh, secondary uh, play. I, I, I still remain the same on safety. I think it's going to be a, a much improved position. I think Makuba is going to be a really good player. He played really well. He played Derek, really well on second watch. Derek Williams, second year, going to be better than first year. Jelani McDonald getting his feet under him. Uh, he run fits maybe is where he needs work, but I thought he was okay in pass coverage. Uh, Michael Taft serves his role, right? Um, and the young guys, I mean, feels to me had a couple of freshman moments. Who hasn't? I mean, there were some guys that those were their senior moments last year at safety, okay? <laughs> so let's be clear about that. Um, so I agree with you at corner. I mean, I, I, I want to see the fourth guy also at corner. Um, does Is it Warren Roberson? Is somebody come on as that fourth corner? Because a corner is going to miss time this year. Last year was Ryan Watts. So who's going to miss time this year? And who's your fourth corner that moves into the third corner spot? Is it Jade Barron or is it one of those younger guys, Warren Roberson? I thought Wardell Mack actually played pretty well 
uh, on second watch in the game. He's got a chance because he plays the run well. Um, he's a physical kid. I mean, most New Orleans kids are that play football, right? That's not that's not a revelation. Uh, I thought what was better, Bobby, quarterback play was even better than I thought. Tight end play, I think, is even better than I thought because Nye Black's going to be a weapon. Um, Gunnar Helm is really good at what he does. And Jordan Washington's got a really good future. Um, I thought offensive line starters, really good. I think backup guards, uh, really good. Um, I, I think backup right tackle to be determined. Um, so I think that's one position that will play itself out a little bit. On the defensive side, I thought the edge, it may be even better than we thought considering that Trey Moore was pretty much held out. Um, Colin Simmons is very disruptive. If Trey Moore's that as a junior, um, then Texas really has something. Colton Vosick's motor and toughness showed up. His ability to uh, get off the football. I thought the edge position looked really, really strong. Justice Finkley, re really strong. I, I thought the edge position was really good. Interior D-line, look, I, I think Dre Bledsoe has really good quickness. I think that could be a factor. I think Sadir Mitchell, if he can get in a little better shape, he didn't look bad in the spring game. He can anchor enough, um, depending on what else you do in the portal. Uh, Aaron Bryant, the same. Uh, not difference makers, but can play some snaps for you. Uh, linebacker, you know, we didn't see much from Anthony Hill. That's a good thing, right? David Benda, Maurice Blackwell, Leonga LaFowles had a really good spring. I thought he showed some things in the spring game again. Um, you know, so I, again, I think maybe if there's any injury at linebacker, what's that second group really look like, right? Um, same kind of at corner. Who, who's that next linebacker? Uh, if there's an injury that causes someone to miss time. Last year, Maurice Blackwell missed some time. Um, somebody will probably miss some time this year. But uh, that's kind of what I thought. Punter will have to be worked out a little bit as well. Uh, did you think – let's talk a little bit about defensive tackle because I think it played better yeah. in the scrimmage than maybe, Jerry, we thought it was going to. Yeah. Uh, because the Texas didn't just run the ball down their throat. Right. Now, maybe that's because Sadir Mitchell started playing better. Maybe Jare Bledsoe, Alex January had a nice stop. Yep. Um, but, you know, at the same time, Jake Majors only played a couple series. Yeah. They didn't really try to establish that run. Um, right. Yeah. I don't think they attacked in the run game like they'll attack at Michigan, for instance. Right. Um, yeah. But I, I thought Savea really showed up in the game. Yeah. I that guess. is the one. And of all the players that lined up at D tackle, that was the guy you needed to see something from because he has all that experience and on a really good team that played the run pretty well in the Pac-12. He was a he. I'm not going to say he was disruptive necessarily, but I will say this: um, he did his assignment very well. He played on the other side of the line of scrimmage multiple times. He proved he can handle large humans, which coming from the Pac-12 is kind of what you wonder, right, Bobby? Because Texas offensive line is bigger than what you see in the Pac-12. Maybe save Oregon. Um, but Savannah, week in, week out in the SEC, is going to face bigger guys than he faced in the Pac-12. And I thought he held his own very well against some big, experienced offensive linemen uh, for, for Texas and some very talented players. So he was my pleasant surprise that kind of we saw what we needed to see out of him. Uh, you know, look, Alfred Collins didn't play much. Uh, but I thought uh, one thing I'll say is um, they played physical up front. They played physical. They they did not. They, yes, I agree with that. They they did not let they did not let the offensive line lean on them. Right. I think that's the way to put. Or to, that's that's going to do it for talking ball for tonight. Uh, I want to say thanks again to Jerry Hamilton. Also say thanks to John Donovan. Uh, remember, he gives free ninety minute consultation to explore how you can help yourself maximize well your wealth, minimize your taxes, and secure your own financial future and legacy. All you have to do is call John. He's got 30 years experience as a financial certified planner, uh, calling the Longhorn Wealth Team, 972-707-4900, or visit him at longhornwealth.net. Jerry, thanks again, man. That's going to do it for Talking Ball. Uh, we'll talk to you again tomorrow on Coffee and Football in the Morning. For now, hook them.